Um, so even though you don't have any required art lessons for this week, um, it's the last week before winter break, um, I wanted to do a couple winter slash holiday themed things with you guys for those of you who want to make art during your time at home. I know it's cold outside um, and you might just really want to make some art. And so um, I showed you how to make paper snowflakes in another video and then this video I'm going to take you through a guided drawing of a reindeer in a Christmassy winter landscape with some Van Gogh inspired skies. Um, so this is the finished product and I'm going to take you through it step by step. You can pause the video if you get behind. I used watercolors, pencil and watercolors and pen to complete this. Complete this. But, it, <clears throat> but if you don't have watercolor paint, that's totally fine. Um, instead of following the painting tutorial, you could color it with crayons or markers or colored pencils or whatever it is that you have at home. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this and um, this is a, this one should be fun for any age. So grab a sibling, a cousin, a grandparent, a parent, an aunt, an uncle, whoever, whoever you want to draw with you and have fun. Okay guys, so um, we're going to do this guided drawing and it's the holidays. So we're going to make it holiday themed and we're going to draw some reindeer. But we're going to review some different art vocabulary and um, skills to show the illusion of space, different things as we go along. So just go with me. If I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video and um, catch up as needed. So to start, I'm going to draw my reindeer just facing forward, normal, um, just straight on. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with an oval and I want to use a pencil and go nice and light because I'm going to build on my basic shapes as I go. So if I draw too dark, it's going to be hard to build on it because um, I won't be able to erase and kind of move along. And then I'm going to do a little tiny short rainbow sort of shape on top of my oval, just like this. Remember, drawing light helps you get it right. And it's okay if the, your first, um, if the first time you draw it, it's not completely perfect because you can just keep going over it. You don't have to immediately erase it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw kind of a tall rainbow shape up and over like this with sort of football type shapes coming off of the top. This is the head, and this is kind of like the snout where his mouth is. I'm going to actually do a circle right here to be his nose, and I can erase the overlapping line in here. Now I'm going to draw his eyes. So the way I'm going to draw his eyes is I'm going to do kind of an oval shape, but they stop here because they're kind of overlapping behind the nose like that. Another oval shape inside. I can do a little highlight. Sometimes people like to do two for the highlight. I'm going to draw a smile. And now I need to do his antlers. So the way I like to do the antlers, I kind of draw my main branch type shape first. And then go around like that. I actually want to add a little branch there. So see, you can just kind of build on things as you go. I'm just going to keep working on those antlers till I like them. draw his body and this is going to eventually be the dark part of the eyes but I'm not going to fill it in yet okay so this is great I could stop here but why would I I should put things going on behind him um 
So I always want to draw, when I'm drawing things that are outside, I want to draw a horizon line. And sometimes that's a straight line, sometimes it's a little wiggly. Because I'm going to draw this kind of snowy, I'm going to have it be wiggly like little snow drifts. And maybe off in the distance, there's some Christmas trees. So Christmas trees, I could just draw a triangle. Or I can give the triangle some spikes. I do that by these little V shapes. Maybe there's another horizon line in the distance with even more trees. And remember, as things go back in space, they get smaller. So as things move up my page or back towards the horizon line, they get smaller. You can also so show space by overlapping. It's a great way to show space. If you didn't want to draw Christmas trees, you could draw different kinds of trees. You could draw something else. You could draw, maybe there's a gingerbread house in the background or, um, I don't know, mountains or something. Maybe there's another reindeer friend hiding out back here. Remember, things appear further away when you draw them back in the horizon line. I'm going to take this away, but that's an idea that you could add if you wanted to. So remember, as things go further away, they get smaller. And so on a paper, usually what that means is as it goes higher up on the paper. And you can have different levels of horizon lines too. That's totally fine. a moon. Maybe I do some Van Gogh inspired wind swirls in the sky. Maybe some of my trees are decorated with lights. I could even put accessories on my um, on my reindeer. I could give them a hat maybe or um, I'm going to have some lights kind of tangled up in his antlers because I love Christmas lights. They are my favorite thing. Oh, I forgot this tree that I overlapped. erase the lines that you're overlapping or you just kind of keep drawing behind. Like that. So that's step one. Think about any other details that you could add to it with your pencil. Remember, this is just stage one. I might make a pencil drawing that I really, really love, but I want you guys to continue to think about ways that you can keep adding to it. I'm actually going to show you some watercolor techniques because I know some of you have asked, Miss Kent, I have watercolors at home and I don't know how to use them. So I'm going to use this opportunity to show you how to use them. But if you don't have watercolor paints at home, you could color this with colored pencils, crayons, or you could just keep adding lots and lots of details with your pencil. You could go over these lines. You could go over these lines, make them darker, make them more clean. You could do some shading, like I could go in and make you know, the shading in the eyes darker. I could add some shadows, things like that. Just anything I can do to really make this the best I can make it. Now, because I'm going to watercolor paint this, I um, used a watercolor paper. That's important because if you try to do a wet media, that means like anything that's wet, like paint um, or even like super watery markers, things like that. If you um, do it on a really thin paper, like a printer paper or a copy paper, it's going to ruin the paper. The paper is not built to withstand that. Um, so instead, I'm going to... I used a watercolor paper 
which is, I guess, if I hold it up close to the camera, you might be able to see it's got some texture to it. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it there. Um, because it's going to absorb that water from the watercolor paint without buckling and getting really wrinkly. So, in the next step, I'm going to show you how to add color to this and paint it. Um, and yeah. Okay, so first things first, I have my cup of water, I have some paint brushes, um, and I want to, if, if it's possible for me to have a couple different sizes of paint brushes, that's ideal because. Um, you got to remember a little brush makes a big, a little mark and a big brush makes a big mark. And so sometimes there's different kinds of marks you're trying to make and you need different size brushes. There's two main types of watercolors that you will likely find just like at a store. Um, these are kind of the go-to ones that we use at school. The ones that are in a palette, um, they're dry to the touch and you add water to them to activate them. But you might also see watercolors that look like this. Um, for a watercolor like this, you're going to need a plate or a palette or something like this, and you would just squeeze a little bit of the watercolor onto the palette, and you can see it's kind of goopy like normal paint, but you don't want to directly paint with that. You still have to add water to it to activate it, but these are nice because they're really pigmented and there's um, a lot more mixing options with them. Um, but most of you, I'm guessing, have paints that are more like this at home, if you have watercolor at home. But that's how you work with the liquid watercolors, if you were wondering. Um, I forgot a paper towel, so I'm going to grab a paper towel. So I have my paper towel and I grabbed one more small brush and what I want to do is the trick to watercolor is I want to start really light. Um, it's really easy to make watercolors darker, it's really difficult to make them lighter. So what you want to do is start really light. And I'm just going to start with the body of my reindeer because that seems like a sensible place to start. I'm using my medium sized brush and to activate this watercolor. I'm going to just make a little um, puddle of water on the top of this color. The more water I add, the lighter it will be, but I don't ever want it to be sticky or goopy. And then I can just directly paint it on to my paper. And notice how watery it is, how I can spread it around. This is just kind of a direct painting way of doing this. Notice how I'm just using the tip of my brush when I'm moving my watercolor around. I'm not smashing it down. I'm going nice and smooth. And I'm just using that edge of my brush to move the paint all over but stay in the lines as best as I can. See how that's really dark there? I can just lighten that up by adding a little water to my brush, spreading it around. And if there's ever a spot while it's still wet, I can just get my paper towel and I can kind of dab it off and that can kind of act as an eraser. Or if I have an excess amount of water, I can kind of dab at that with my paper towel and then use my wet brush to kind of smooth everything out. Now, now I kind of have an idea for how dark I made that. I like that it's a darker brown because I want my antlers to be brown, but I want them to be a darker brown than the fur. And again, do you see how I'm just getting it? tiny bit on the tip of my brush and it a little bit goes a long way. This is especially true with watercolor. 
just using the tip of your brush and remembering how a little bit goes a really long way. And because I want this part to be wider, I'm actually going to make a puddle of water on the edge of my palette, or if you don't have a, a little lid like this, you could use um, like a paper plate or something, a piece of plastic, something like that. And I'm gonna just add a tiny bit of brown to this puddle of water. And that's gonna help me get a lighter color. So let's see how I did there. As I spread that around, I'm going to get a nice tan color. So I'm going to go all the way around. This darker color for here. And I'm just slowly starting to build, build everything up. I'm going to add a little water to my red. I'm going to give him a Rudolph nose, because why not? It's looking a little bit pink. I'm going to add some. And because my table is not completely, you can kind of tell my table's shaking a little bit, my water is bleeding, which is not very fun. But I'm just going to pick up those mistakes. It's not a big deal. Sometimes it helps too to wait for the section around it to dry before you go in and add a new section. That can be helpful sometimes if you're having trouble with that bleeding issue. Yep, with a smaller brush, I'm going to add a little water. Remember, we always want to kind of make this puddle of water to activate the colors on the palette. That's perfect. tip of my brush trying not to shake the table as much because that was messing my watercolors up watercolor it's really important to have a nice flat surface it's level with the floor it's not the kind of medium you typically want to use with an easel or anything And I don't want to, I want to make his smile black, but I'm going to wait until this is dry. And I actually don't have a white on this. And I was planning on keeping this, this is snow. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to just give this the slightest little blue tint. Just because I don't really like to leave white paper. I like to have at least a little something something, but I'm going to go ahead and give it some shadows. Fill it. You can always mix colors over here too. This is a great spot for that. And if you run out of space, you can just use your paper towel to wipe it up. And so even though my snow is white, I still want to think about how light would affect it. Thinking about how there would be shadows and how the moonlight would maybe leave some shadows or a glow on the snow. Well, that's a good start. I feel good about that start. Forgot his ears. Oh no. Okay, so for the trees. 
these I've got these little details on there so I want to make sure especially with the trees because I have these details happening that I start really light notice how much I'm able to spread this water around I do not need to constantly be adding more paint onto it a little bit goes a long way also notice how when I mix my colors I'm giving my brush a bath in between touching new colors on here that's how stuff like that happens is if I don't clean my brush I want to make sure I clean my brush in between touching each color You see how because the, both of these areas were wet and I'm going kind of fast, how that bled out. If I had let the area around it dry, it wouldn't have done that because water stay, like wants to stay with other water. So if I let it dry, it won't bleed as much. But I can erase it. I can embrace the imperfection. It's all good. So I'm going to keep working on these trees and I will come back in a second and we'll talk about um, a few more techniques with the details and with the sky. Okay, so I'm ready to start working on the sky and I said I was going to kind of do a sky inspired by Van Gogh's Starry Night because that's one of my favorites. So I'm just going to start with a yellow crescent moon. You can make it a full moon or a waning moon, whatever kind of moon you want it to be. I just like the little crescent shape. I think it's cute. And what I'm going to do is this is going to take a little bit of patience, but I'm going to do different um, layers of purple and blue. And remember, I want to start light, so I'm going to add a lot of water onto my palette. And I want to think about how each motion is a swirl, even if it kind of um, bleeds together. I want to think about swirling. You do different kind of swirls, but every paint mark I make is going to be a swirl. And when I get up close to my foreground and my middle ground, which is the trees and the deer, I can just kind of protect them by blocking in a little bit. And then going back in and swirling it some more. So I'm kind of protecting everything. So in these little trickier spots, I'm kind of getting those covered. Oh, his ear turned green from the bleed of the Christmas tree. I'll have to fix that. So I'm going around and even in these tiny spots, I'm making sure I fill them in with blue, but because even though the night sky, you think about it like black, it's really more like blues and purples, especially in art. And I'm going to deal with um, the details of the lights around his antlers in a minute. So I'm just going to focus on getting the um, sky painted in, getting it painted around all of this foreground stuff. Sometimes my waters, are, my watercolors are really thirsty, so they absorb the water faster, and I have to add some more. That's what I just did a second ago. Notice how, as I add more layers on top, how it starts to all my different layers start to work together. So 
and because I'm using so much water, that's why it's important that I have a good thick mixed media canvas or watercolor paper. I'm going to add that purple, do some purple swirls. And the more different colors I have, these are, this is only an eight color palette. But some of you might have a lot more colors to choose from or more colors that you can mix with. You can get all sorts of different pretty layers happening. But you can do a whole lot with just these eight colors. When you have marks that aren't very smooth like that, but you do it on purpose, that's called being painterly. So that's another vocab word for you. So I'm being very painterly in the sky. I'm letting my brush strokes shine through to add interest and expression to my art. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take that smaller brush and I'm just going to add, I want these areas behind the deer to be nice and dark to kind of help my deer pop out towards the front. So I'm just mixing my blue and my yellow using my small brush and I'm just trying to pop my deer from the front up to the front by being careful and using the tip of my brush to go right up to the edge of the deer. It's going to make him look like he's out right up there up front. And while that dries, I can take the tip of my brush and I'm going to put some lights. I'm going to do some red ornament type lights. And I don't want to water this down too much because I need it to stand out on top of the screen. And I want it to stay pretty small. So I just have a nice little puddle of red. I'm just going to pinch my brush so I get a nice little tip there. And with the very, very tip of my brush, I'm going to go in. be some kind of garland or it could be red lights. I'm not really sure. I just like the design. I could even go, oop, that's my mask, not my paper towel. I can mix some yellow in between. that it's a little light over here so I'm going to go back and do this. So much of art is editing as you go. Noticing things as everything starts to come together and continuing to work on it until you get it right. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to add some more details to my trees 
and then we're going to do some finishing touches before we call this done. Okay, so what I have added um, are some shadows. I've gone through and done a few more little details. I've cleaned a couple things up and I'm pretty happy with this as it is. Something that's so fun about watercolor is um, just kind of how spontaneous and whimsical it looks. Um, it is not a medium that's meant to be 100% perfect all the time. Um, so I feel pretty good about um, this. I'm actually going to go. I want his nose to be a little bit more red now that I'm looking at it. I'm just going to add another layer of red real fast right here. Uh, much better. That just helps him pop. All right, now I feel like it's done. Um, but something that I personally like to do with my watercolors is outline the shapes and do some illustration on top with some pen or a Sharpie. So I'm going to um, actually blow dry this. I'm going to use like a hair dryer and I'm going to dry it. Um, and then, or you can just let it air dry if you have, you know, a lot of time. Um, and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to trace with pen and then I'm going to be done. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you've added some um, ideas and details and special things that are all your own. And if you want to share what you made with me, you can send it to me on um, in my email or just however you like to send things to me. Um, but remember, this is not a required assignment. This is just something that I've offered for you guys to do for fun because um, we're home over the break and we're in phase one and all that. So I hope you had fun with this um, and you learned something or reviewed something and I will see you guys soon. Bye!